హలో ఎవ్రీ వన్ వెల్కమ్ టు రా ఆన్లైన్ ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ వెంకటకృష్ణన్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ మెడిసిన్ విల్ బి డిస్కస్ ఇన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ టాపిక్ ఇన్ ఈసీజీ అరెత్నియాస్ హౌ టు ఐడెంటిఫై అరెత్నియాస్ అండ్ డిఫరెన్షియేట్ వేరియస్ అరెత్నియాస్ యాజ్ ఈసీ యాజ్ పాసిబుల్ ఇఫ్ యూ కేర్ఫుల్లీ అనలైజ్ ది ఈసీజీ ఈచ్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ meticulously you can definitely diagnose each and every arrhythmia at least the common arrhythmias we can easily learn for that we should know what is the mechanism of arrhythmia formation so, arrhythmias can occur from sa node or av node or ventricular cells out of this we should know whether p waves are present or absent plus or minus if p waves are present it comes either from the sa node or from the atrium if no p waves either that means it is coming from the av junction or below that is very important then automaticity you know how much is the intrinsic heart rate for sinus node atrial cells av junction ventricular cells that also determines what is the type of arrhythmia SA node, bradycardia, tachycardia. Atrial cells, if it is firing from occasionally from a focus, that is premature atrial contractions. Re-entrant circuit, continuously firing from a re-entrant circuit, it is atrial flutter. Multiple foci, or multiple micro re-entrant wavelets that is atrial fibrillation this is a must know ecg we will learn how to identify atrial fibrillation this is what is a re-entrant pathway coming from anywhere from sa node or in within the av node or in the atrium loop re-entrants are there multiple micro reentrant wavelets you can see multiple micro reentrant wavelets wandering small areas of activation which generate fine chaotic impulse impulses the colliding wavelets can in turn generate new force of activation that's what happens the atrial tissue which produces atrial fibrillation junctional problems if it is a re-entrant circuit re-entry phenomenon within the av node there is a alpha pathway and a beta pathway slow pathway and a fast pathway through this the re-entry can occur within this pathway producing av nrt other is called supraventricular tachycardia or the impulses are blocked producing av junctional block av junctional block ventricular cell either it is a ventricular ectopic that is premature ventricular contractions where the firing is from one or more foci firing from continuously from multiple foci it is ventricular fibrillation through a looping re-entrant circuit continuous firing it is ventricular tachycardia you can carefully observe this ecg which definitely there is a tachycardia any tachycardia needs careful observation the first point is whether it's a regular or a irregular tachycardia if you broadly see it seems to be a regular tachycardia can see this one this one you can see the variation it is not same and the next one is first is regular tachycardia whether p waves are present whether p waves are present there are no p waves no definite p waves then whether the qrs is normal or wide so next point if the qrs is normal it is supra 
ventricular if it is supraventricular supraventricular can be av node or atrium or sa node to say whether it is sa node or atrium or av node there should be presence of p waves if p waves are present it is coming from the sa node or from the atrium if p waves are absent it is coming from the p waves absent and normal qrs it is coming from the av node so what is heart rate of this patient you can calculate heart rate it is 2 and of 1 2 3 uh, around 1500 by 12 this comes around the heart rate comes around 140 so it is a tachycardia narrow complex tachycardia almost regular no p waves the diagnosis is supraventricular tachycardia if the rr is definitely irregular with bizarre p waves which we learned in subsequent ecgs then it is atrial fibrillation irregular rr is almost always atrial fibrillation apart from this you can see non specific q and t inversion is seen in lead 3 so it is not significant unless and otherwise q and t3 q3 t3 there is no s in lead v1 and v1 v2 should have a rv strain the most common manifestation of pulmonary embolism is sinus tachycardia this is supraventricular tachycardia no p waves normal qrs the treatment for this patient is emergency you give adenosine adenosine is contraindicated in airway disease you have to rule out airway disease before giving adenosine followed by other drugs a long term you can maintain on verapamil amedorin can be given and if there is a pathway it can be ablated radio frequency ablation can be ablate and be identifying the pathway by electrophysiology study the next this also is very easy to diagnose this is a rhythm with some bizarre p waves the p waves are not normal multiple p waves inverted p waves very easy to diagnose this is inverted p waves saw tooth saw tooth pattern of p waves the p wave duration is one big box that means the atrial rate is 300 but the ventricular rate is only 75 70 to 75 almost 4 is to 1 av block so not all or not all atrial impulses are conducted there is a reentry phenomenon causing this is classical atrial flutter now comes the next uh, complicated one 